Hello grade 10 welcome back to another video with me Ms. Martins. In today's video we're going to be looking at exam questions, past paper questions based on the atom. You don't want to go anywhere, it's not just this question that we'll be doing, we'll be covering a few exam questions. Let's jump right in but before I go anywhere and well before I start the question I just want to ask you to please if you haven't done so yet please subscribe. It really means the world to me when you click that button and you become one of my official YouTube students. It really does mean a lot to me and if you've already done that thank you you can give the video a thumbs up if you like it let me know in the comments what you want to see next right question three an element x has two isotopes now dealing with isotopes and knowing how to work out the relative atomic mass of an element um, all of that stuff is part of the atom the percentage abundance and atomic masses are given below. Define the term isotope. Okay, first things first, a definition right off the bat, something that you need to study off by heart. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have the same atomic number, but different mass numbers. Or you can say that they have the same number of protons, which is basically atomic number. Protons is dictated by the atomic number, but different number of neutrons. The different number of neutrons is what makes the mass number different. So atoms of the same elements, it means that, for example, you can have chlorine 35 and chlorine 36 and chlorine 37. They're all the same element, but the different atoms have different mass numbers. That's why I'm saying chlorine 35, chlorine 36, chlorine 37. 35, 36, 37, those are the different mass numbers, and it's because the number of neutrons are different. 3.1.2 now wants me to calculate the relative atomic mass, RAM, relative atomic mass, of element X. It's three marks, so it's a calculation, and this is how we do it. So this is essentially the formula you use. You take the percentage of the one isotope times the mass number of the one isotope. Plus, that must be a plus, percentage of the other isotope multiplied by the mass number of the other isotope. Each bracket represents one isotope. I have two brackets because in this question I have two isotopes. Isotope 1, isotope 2. So we take the percentage, 60.4, and we multiply it by 69,5252. So that's the first isotope. And then 39.6 multiplied by 70,9249. Just like that, and we divide by 100. Do not put the percentage signs in here, and don't divide by 100 in these top brackets because we divide by 100 at the bottom. Type it in your calculator, press equals. And when I type that into my calculator, I get 70, 079, so on. You may now round off to two decimal places, 70, 08. Technically, the unit is atomic mass units. So you'll get a mark for substituting, a mark for substituting, and a mark for your answer. Now, please take notes. Please don't round off here in the middle of the question. You can only round off at the end. The next question then wants me to write down the symbol for element X. Now, when they say the symbol, they mean according to the periodic table. So the symbol for nitrogen is N. The symbol for oxygen is O. So they want the symbol for this element that we just calculated that has a relative atomic mass of 70,08. So how do we find this? Remember, the relative atomic mass basically corresponds to the big numbers on the periodic table. So the relative atomic mass of copper or let's take a very common one, chlorine, is 35.5, the big number. The relative atomic mass of aluminium is 27. So the relative atomic mass that we just calculated was 70.08. On the periodic table, you will rarely see decimals. It's a rounded off version. So we need to find something as close to 70.08 as possible. So we're looking for 70. Which element here has a big number of 70? I hope you can see that it is GA. There we go. Right, let's move on. The number of protons and electrons, the mass number, and the atomic number of aluminium and its iron, Al3+, plus, are shown in the table below. Some of the answers or the values have been omitted, so they've been left out. And we must fill in, for five marks, the remaining answers. Now, first things first you get two things in this type of question. You get an atom, which in this case, aluminium is my atom. 
atoms are neutral they don't have a charge so al neutral atom you can find it on the periodic table and i just spoke about aluminium early earlier weirdly enough there's aluminium we can read off all the information for aluminium from the periodic table as is but then you also get something like al3 plus this is what we call an iron now remember ions are formed when we either lose or gain electrons so because this is a plus three or three plus iron how do you form an iron with a positive charge this is called a cat iron by the way cat ions are positive they're positive how do you form a positive iron you must lose electrons this is very very important to understand and I know it is a little bit weird. You think, okay, I'm losing electrons, but then why is it plus three? Remember, electrons are negative. So if you lose negative stuff, you lose the negative, you become positive. So Al3 plus means that it is the aluminium atom that has lost three electrons. And that's why it has become Al3 plus. Very important. Just keep that in mind for later. Right. So let's fill in the table. Aluminium Al number of protons 13 where do we get that number from if we look at aluminium and let's make it a little bit bigger the small number at the top of the element on your periodic table that is what we call the atomic number and the atomic number will always represent the number of protons positively charged particles in the nucleus number of protons in an atom but if we're talking about an atom, not an ion, then the 13 also represents the number of electrons. So Al has 13 protons and 13 electrons, and the atomic number is also 13. So just remember, if we're talking about an atom, neutral, no charge, then the small number is the atomic number, which represents the protons, which also represents the electrons. But when we're talking about the iron, it is slightly different. Let's just take a look quickly at the question. They already gave me the mass number over here of Al. It's 27, and we can just fact check that very quickly. Yes, indeed, it is 27. It's the big number over there. Right, now let's talk about the iron. Remember, the iron is slightly different. An iron is formed when electrons are lost or gained. So, electrons are lost or gained so number of protons in the aluminium iron will be the same you can never ever lose or gain protons so the number of protons will always be the same whether we're talking about an atom or an iron but now the number of electrons is not the same remember because it's formed an iron this is a positive iron it's a cat iron it means it has lost electrons and how many electrons did it lose it lost three electrons because it has a charge of plus three. So if the neutral atom had 13 electrons, what is 13 minus three? It lost three electrons. The iron will now have 10 electrons. And for the iron, the mass number is still the same. It'll still be 27. So you might be thinking, ma'am, when will the mass number change? Remember, the mass number will only change if we are dealing with an isotope. Remember, isotopes have the same atomic number, but different mass numbers. But these are not isotopes. This is an atom and this is an iron. I hope that this question has been helpful for you. Please let me know if you'd like to see more of this exact topic this question in another video i will do more for you i can't wait to see it in another video very very soon bye everyone